Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Amber and this is Fundy Freed. On this channel we tackle different dangerous beliefs that come from the fundamentalist movement and we talk about various topics and share survivor stories. And remember if you have a short story you wish to share, a topic you would like for me to try to cover, or even a meme or a video you want me to react, the di directions to do so are in the box below. Before I start today I want to preface this with I am not a college graduate theologian. My background strongly believed that women had no place in ministry outside of nursery work, um, basic women's ministries like food trains, and keeping the home, which there's nothing wrong with any of that at all. But this kept me from ever having the dreams of going to Bible college and becoming a pastor. So... I am not a the I have no theology degree, but I do have a lifetime of lived experience in what I'm talking about, and I will never ask anyone to ascribe to what I believe or what I am portraying today as what I define as deconstruction. This is just my take on it, and I want to share it with you. I also want to give a trigger warning at the beginning and I want to do it with every one of my videos because there may be mention of SA, CA, PA and other church um, issues that may be triggering for some people and so I always want to preface my videos with that just if you are concerned that you may be uncomfortable with some of the topics or anything I may be covering in this video, please don't feel like you need to watch it. Today, I wanna to talk about what is deconstructing. I came across the term deconstructing about a year and a half ago with TikTok videos. And I realized the deconstruction these people were talking about were very much describing what I was currently doing in my own faith. I concluded was that these, this terminology means that I am tearing away and removing all the toxic or the bad things I've been taught and then rebuilding myself and my belief into what I believe is safe and true and right. It was in that moment of that realization I'd actually been slowly gutting my beliefs out. I don't think I really actually acknowledged it up to that point, but I knew I was making some type of progress to move away from quite a few of the beliefs I grew up in. And so this term helped me almost label what I was doing and it helped me compartmentalize and make it make sense what I was doing. Cults like Jim Jones or Scientology or Heaven's Gate or the FLDS with Warren Jeffs, all of that has always fascinated me. Because of my interest in them, I have obsessively watched every cult documentary you could possibly imagine. In watching them, I noticed that there were a lot of similarities whenever it came to what I grew up in. Tactics such as love bombing, um, denying the use of critical thinking unless it agreed with them. Um, building a completely codependent community so if you left you would have no one. Abusive terms and language from the pulpit followed up with, again, the love bombing cycle. The stripping of your self-identity and your self-worth to be one of the collective, one of the sheep. And making it seem as though God did not love you unless you were in this belief and believed this exact thing and believed every word that came out of the pastor's mouth or the leadership's mouth. And I realized I grew up in a cult. This realization is what really kind of kicked off the heavy, like the really, really hard work of me deconstructing from my, my belief. Ever so slowly and very painfully, because anyone who has been in understands that this is not something you can just walk away from overnight. I started gutting out all of these toxic beliefs. With each belief, and I think some of us can relate to this, because with each belief I tried to remove 
followed with it was the shame and the guilt of going, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? If you believe this or change this belief, you are dooming your children to hell or you're dooming yourself to hell or you are no longer going to be a proper witness to the people around you. All of that was from the cult tactics and beliefs that were so much shoved in my head. So with each piece being removed, I was reversing the construction that was so delicately enforced, well, not really delicate. With each piece that I removed, I was removing all of the construction that had been forced into place into my brain and into my body from the time I was born. This process of deconstructing is ripping that apart. Deconstructing to me is so much more than just a fad word. I truly ascribe to the belief of deconstructing my belief. I do not like to use terminology that may not make people feel included if they have not grown up in this environment and are not, not necessarily taking it to the same path I am. Deconstruction is the best way that I can describe what I'm doing. As much as I don't like to use terminology that is not inclusive to everyone or seem to be inclusive to everyone because Christians tend to have our, we have our own language, especially the King James only people, we have our own language. It can make people kind of feel left out or ostracized. That is not my intention at all. I use this word to truly just describe myself and the idea of what other people are doing, but it's not anything I, I ever intend for someone else to ascribe to unless they truly believe it. It reminded me of another time in, in history where people came together slowly at first and changed the world by leaving their beliefs. October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther nailed his thesis on the door of the church. The action started a chain of events that would spread like wildfire that challenged the status quo and the beliefs of the time of the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church had all authority, all interpretation, was all-knowing, and was greatly taking advantage of the people that served in, in the churches or believed in, a, believed in that faith. <laughs> Sound familiar? From there, William Tyndale spread his belief that the Bible should be translated into English. The Bible at the time was only written in Latin. It was considered heresy to have it in any other language because they did not believe the common people should have access to the Word of God. You know why? Because they feared each person's interpretation and they may find something that contradicted with their power and authority. After being chased from England in 1523, William Tyndale finally published his works of the New Testament publish his New Testament work in 1525. The Reformation from there exploded. People started breaking away from the Catholic Church. They started reading the Bible for themselves and discovering that there were so many things the church had been doing and abusing over the centuries that they wanted to reform everything. They began discovering things about God that they had been lied to. And this, my friends, was heresy time hundreds of people lost their lives being burned at the stake and tortured and tormented because they left the status quo and they started thinking for themselves. So thankfully we do not have the threat of being burned alive and we have the ability to have open platforms to talk about our views that challenge the status quo of evangelical Christianity and fundamental Christianity. The parallels though to me are fascinating. My belief is that we are currently in a modern day reformation. We're now questioning, hundreds, thousands of us are questioning all the things that we have been taught, all the things that we have been told that God is. And we're starting to learn that what we have been told, we've been lied to. And we're starting to understand that what we've been told have been lies. We are now searching for ourselves, we're asking the hard questions, we're coming to the conclusions, we're changing our lives to then better the, the generation after us. We are shedding toxic beliefs that have boxed us in for so many years, a lifetime even for many of us. And we're finding true freedom in this journey. We are going against the status quo of our own religions. We are 
what some churches, or actually a good majority of churches really, are calling part of the great falling away of the last days. We are heretics and we are committing heresy in the greatest form. When really all we're doing is what they did just in the first reformation. We are thinking for ourselves. Also, I do want to p point out that in contrast to the reformation, because there are a lot of parallels, but the difference is now people have the liberty to deconstruct to the point or question to the point they no longer have a belief in a religious system whatsoever. And I personally can understand how people can get to that point. I still own my faith and I still have my faith and it is very strong, but I completely respect and understand how people, because of their history of abuse and hurt, have concluded that they no longer want to believe. King James onlyism has become the modern day Latin. The versions that have floated around since the NIV came out and the new King James are all heresies because it takes the power away of men being able to interpret a translation from the 1600s that I've actually even retranslated several times. Side note. And it takes that power away from them. They can no longer interpret this the scripture that is Old English and make their own conclusions and have people believe it. So they're threatened by this idea. But I will do a video on KJV or King James onlyism another time because that is a topic and video in this. So this, my friends, is what it means to me to be deconstructing. And this is what my view of the definition of deconstructing is. I would love to hear from you in the comment section below what your definition of deconstructing is and what you how you feel about this any of reconstructing your faith what does that mean to you please i would love to hear from you in the comments below and again if you have a story that you want to share i will have the instructions in the description box below down here of how to, to send that to me if you wish to remain anonymous you totally can just write it in and i will read it for you and share your story that way. If you want to do a video interview, we can set up a time. All of that is done through the email below. If you have a Christian meme or a type of video you'd like for me to react to, also send it to me below in the, just follow the instructions and send it to me below. And if you have a topic you'd like for me to try to cover in the near future, put it in the comments. If you like what I'm doing, Please subscribe to the channel, like this video, share it with your friends. Click the bell so you get the notifications for when the next video comes out so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, everyone has a story. So what's yours?